morning from Takik. We're currently in central Laos. We worked our way down a couple of days ago from Vientiane, the capital of Laos, and now we're in Takik. We're staying in a place called the Intira Takik, which is essentially right in the center of this town. This place was high on the list of recommendations, and it's also one of the very, very few hotels that Takik actually seems to have, but it does come with breakfast. I've got some fresh fruits and yogurt, which looks quite fun because the yogurt's on top like a sauce. We've got some breads, and we've got some condensed milk to go right in our delicious coffees, which is the perfect way to start the day. And if you walk just down this road for about two minutes, maybe even one minute, depending on how fast you are, you're right by the Mekong River and you can literally shake hands with the people in Thailand. It looks like it's so close, so it's quite nice. Today is our first day of the Takek Loop road trip. Now, you may have seen our last video where we drove all the way from Vientiane to Takek, that was about a 350 kilometer drive. Basically all on one road, loads of potholes, not great. Today we're going on the Takek loop, which is a 350 kilometer loop that goes up north through the countryside of Laos and then back around and then down into Takek again. So we spent the whole day yesterday planning this whole Takek loop and what happens afterwards. If you watched our previous videos, you know that after this Takek loop, we wanted to head down towards Paxe and then to 4,000 islands. We have the car, our lovely Bertie, until we get down to Paxe where we gotta return the car. We found the most adorable little cafe next to the Mekong River where we spent the whole day yesterday as well as up here on our little balcony bit planning where to stay and what to see. There's a reasonable amount of information online on the Takek Loop, a lot of places to see, lots of places to stay, a lot of those places don't seem to be open anymore, but we've booked all of our hotels, thankfully, for my brain, that's super exciting because this last minute stuff gets me real stressed out. So I'm really glad to know that we've got loads of places to stay, including one place tonight that was only nine US dollars for the both of us. So that'll be interesting to see. <laughs> we got a really nice room in this place. It came with an outside balcony area and there was no one else in the room next door. So we had it all to ourselves. If you've not met him yet, this is Bertie, our 1.6 diesel Hyundai Creta. It's very dirty now. Yeah, it looks like we've been doing off-roading. We haven't really, the road is off-road. <laughs> yeah, so the road's down from the Antien, all 350 kilometers of it, apart from maybe a couple of miles, was this orange dirt road. We might need to go get some diesel just in case. It says we have 446 kilometers in the tank, but you never know with these up and down roads. And people have told us to get a lot of cash before going as well, because there's not that much ATMs or people can't really take cards. So should we try and find an ATM as well? Yes. All right. Let's go. Let's go. to translate this. I don't think the guy working here speaks English or can read loud. I'm trying to translate with my app and he's like... I I Make it speak out loud. Mm. Oh yeah, unless he's Vietnamese, I don't know. Got it. Good. Someone came to translate. That was uh, <laughs> stressful. I didn't want him to put something wrong in the car, you know? I ended up just telling him to put 200,000 kip worth of diesel in. Not to full, I don't think they would have understood, but we have got an extra 150 kilometers in the tank now, so I think we'll be good for this trip. All yeah. the way to Pexe. We've got 639 kilometers in the tank, so I think oh. it should be. Now we can go. Let's go! Woo. That first bit of the drive was just insane. Like maybe 10 minutes out of Vientiane and you've got all these limestone cliffs. It's very beautiful so far, all the drive here. And actually, I wasn't sure... <laughs> I wasn't sure when we arrived whether we were in the right place, but I can actually see a sign now. Chien Glib Cave. That's what she's trying to pronounce. I never know about the X's, whether they're sh or X. I think. Yeah. Okay, so this is definitely how we get there, right? If there was no upkeep for this, I'd be feeling scared, but this looks legit. Feels pretty sturdy, hopefully. 
won't fall through. It looks like there's um. What do you call that thing where people climb like zip line and like these things? Like a can like a canopy. Okay, what does it say? What? This is talking about walking on the tree treehouse room accommodation, but I just want to see the cave. Yeah. Are we in the right place for the cave? From the photos online, it did look like you could do all the zip lining and stuff, but not sure if you can actually go into the cave otherwise. So it's uh, 10,000 kip each to walk to this cave. She had a little piece of paper where she had drawn a little person and said equals 10,000. So it was 10,000 per person and it said cave fee on it. So we're definitely heading towards the cave. They put it this way. So they also do zip lines, evidently, and I think the canopy walks or the ca those things that we don't know what they're called. But obviously the cave is this way because we're heading towards the rock formations. Yeah, I think we found the cave. It's so peaceful and then someone starts going on a zip line. <laughs> yeah. You have to jump? We'll go down. No, don't. Careful. Whoa. <laughs> I'll just... <laughs> Not the best day to wear white trousers, eh? <laughs> It's very slippery. Yeah, don't come here in flip-flops. Yeah, don't come here in flip-flops. I don't think we can go in. Don't think we can go any further than where we are right now, but for 10,000 kip, that was pretty good. First stop of the tour done. There's many, many, many more to go. We've literally only driven about 10 minutes out of the NTN. Ready to go? Yes. Let's go to the next place. Let's go. the first cave and heading to the next destination on the first part of this loop it is just so beautiful outside literally we are surrounded by these cliffs they look like the limestone cliffs of Halong Bay sort of the rock formations around there and it also reminds us a lot of Krabi when you're first sort of driving in it is very beautiful they do say though don't they it's about the journey not the destination like this journey is awesome to look at it's really nice. Two tickets? Two tickets. Oh. Yeah, just, just us two. <laughs> All right, so there is a sign just outside. You can visit the cave. You can also zip line here and you can take a boat ride. We're just here. It's another cave, yes, but this one from online, it seems to be that you can actually enter inside and it's sort of lit up with various colors. It's supposed to be quite grand. And even somewhere online it said that you should spend about two hours in this cave. Yeah, you can go very deep into the cave, they say. To be honest, um, I've not really ever been a cave person, so I'm not sure if I'm ready to go seven kilometers deep into a cave. Seven kilometers? Yeah, some, something crazy, yeah. I'm also not a cave person. Uh, sounds claustrophobic. It sounds scary. Okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> There's a cafe here. I think we should probably get a coffee. Do we? Okay. Lady. Ice coffee. Song. Mm. Song. We've been addicted to these iced coffees since we've come to Laos. Something about them, they're like sweet and very strong. A little bit like a Vietnamese coffee, but see what this one is like before I say anything. Oh, yeah, that's good. Perfect way to cool down before we head up into this cave. This cave looks a bit more legit. The steps that lead up to it. There's a waterfall coming out. Yes. Cheers. Oh. Oh, that is good. These two together were 40, whereas the entrance was 30 each. So the entrance was more than these iced coffees. So this cave better be good because this is fantastic. <laughs> it's definitely much cooler here next to this cave. A lot cooler. I was just saying that it's kind of cold. It's a bit windy. But, yeah, it's windy. I don't understand how it's windy because it's the entrance of a cave. Maybe there's like a wind tunnel in the cave and it's just like blowing out. Because that windmill. It's so crazy. It's like, wow. Wow. This is pretty grand. Uh, now this, I mean, I'm not a cave person, but this is more like it. This is more cavey than the other cave. The other cave was also a cave, but this is like Look at this. a cave. Look at this cave has staircases, everything. It's bizarre, it's quite windy in here. It's actually pretty cool what they've done with the place. So I can imagine the cave would be pitch black without any lights, but they've got these lights here. They've got these colorful lights on the roof. But we just spoke to someone and the boat is over here somewhere. Ah, here. This actually looks kind of nice, but also kind of like super creepy. Maybe because it's in a cave, it feels very much like there's going to be people in the water trying to like lure you in. You know what I mean? Like it's creepy, <laughs> creepy storyline. It is very beautiful though. <laughs> I don't tend to love caves because I can get a little bit claustrophobic. They're usually small and dark. In this sense, this cave is actually 
quite large and sort of breezy, airy. It's completely lit up. It's got staircases all over the place. So it feels less scary and more kind of just epic. I have to say this cave is worth the 30k, more than the 10k that we paid earlier. Definitely, because we can actually come in here. I don't think we've even touched the sides of how big this is. You know what it feels like? Because all of these staircases are coming, well, there's, I guess they're carved out of, no, they're not. They're probably made out of cement. Either way, they're not made out of wood, but it looks like one of those paintings. I don't know if you're gonna know this reference now, Dale. The one where the steps go up and down. No, yeah, steps go up and down. There's people upside yeah. down. It's like doors and windows, and it's all over the place. It feels like that. Obviously, we're not upside down, luckily, yet, yeah. but it's, it's actually really cool. <laughs> also a little bit like Hogwarts. Yes. A bit like Hogwarts, but the steps. Well, the stairs aren't moving. We've come to the end of where we can actually walk to in this cave. I think if you were on a boat, go all the way around that corner there. It's <laughs> like a, an amusement park when you're finally exiting the ride and it's like, woo, yeah. Nice. Survived. Watch out for your head here. We survived. We did it. So <laughs> far, obviously, we've only done two stops along the Takik Loop. The first one. If you're not really into caves, I wouldn't necessarily say what that... What if you're doing the zip line? Oh, if you're doing the zip line, but then you can also do that here. Either way, this cave, totally worth it. Like, definitely, if you're thinking about coming here, come to this cave. Super cool. Like, really cool, actually. <laughs> I don't even like caves. You know, it would be really annoying now if we had to go sit on a motorbike for an hour. Uh, we get to go sit in a lovely air-conditioned car. Bertie! <laughs> Tell them the story about when you got your driver's license and what happened. So I got my driver's license quite late, actually. I didn't learn to start driving. I didn't have a car in the family growing up. So at 23, I was like, I'm getting a driver's license, did a course, got my driver's license straight away, passed it straight away. I was actually quite good in that car. Then I bought a car. Luckily, I was insured straight away from the day that I bought it. Bought the car, crashed it the night that I picked it up. Managed to repair it, fine, no problems. And then I parked it up somewhere, sold it, have not driven since. It scared the schnitzels out of me. <laughs> so that's why I'm driving, even though she does have a license. Google Maps says that there's somewhere that we can have some food here, but I'm not sure if it's open, but should we take a look? Yeah, let's try to figure it out. Looks <laughs> like there's people here. Yeah, we can go down there. Look. Oh, yeah. I can smell the food. Oh, it's underwater. Okay. There's loads of people eating, so there's definitely food here. On the menu, but it's all in Lao, so we're gonna have to translate. We managed to order two cow pad fried rice. Turns out that's the same in Lao and Thai. Not sure if it's gonna come with vegetables or meats, but we ordered some food. <laughs> Okay, so they were blasting very <laughs> loud music. We could not get a word in to each other. As soon as we ordered, she was like, turn the music up. <laughs> yeah, crank it. We got some ice creams to finish off. That actually quite nice meal. Yeah. We managed to order cow pad. That's basically the only thing that we thought they were, probably would have. It came with prawns, so that was It nice. came with prawns, yes, and some other seafood in there. So that was really good. Two waters, two fried rice, two ice lollies for 76,000. Kip is very affordable and the food was good. Yeah, the food was really good. And there was loads of fish around in the water. So some of the prawn heads and stuff, throw it in there and they all went crazy. <laughs> that was quite fun. One thing that we have kind of noticed traveling through Laos or getting out of the really big cities in Laos is that it's a little bit more difficult to communicate. It's also difficult in some areas in Thailand, but I feel like it's more easily accessible to try to get your point across. There's a lot of hand gestures. There's a lot of meeting you halfway. We've come across a lot of people here so far that haven't really either understood uh, that we're trying to get something across. We were mm. trying to say, we want fried rice or do you, what can we eat? And she said coffee. Mm. Um, so I think- It's our fault for not speaking Lao, obviously, but we don't really expect anyone to speak English here. It's just a little bit of a little bit of a thing. Food, yes or no, you know, mm. it's tougher. But anyway. We, we figured it out. Yeah, and we got ice cream, so I'm happy. Cheers. On to the next one. <laughs> it 
it got very different, very beautiful, very quickly. It was, as soon as we started sort of climbing into the mountains, basically it went from being mountainous to just being green jungle, a lot of water. Uh, we're actually going over a bridge right now. A lot of traffic, which is primarily cows and about seven year olds on scooters. And goats. And, goats and a lot of dogs. It's a baby, I guess, to us. It's a baby, but I think po Posey, that sign. Oh, yeah. We have booked this, by the way. We did a bit of booking last night. So, Fozzy Talang. This one. No, that's that's Sabaidi. No, Fozzy Talang Lao. Oh, okay. Oh, there's signs for Sabaidi as well. We booked Fozzy Garden. Yeah, but we didn't book Fozzy Talang because we couldn't find the booking for Fozzy Talang. But we think it's the same place. Should be the same place, right? Well, there's only one way to find out. Doesn't look like there's anyone else here. This place doesn't even look finished. Lady. 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 Is this Fozzy Garden? Okay, so it's not that place. All right, it's another posy. Well, it definitely exists then if she's saying it's on the main road. Oh, that's why we missed it. Oh, look how small the reception look at is. That. That's the reception. We have booked for tonight. Uh, we booked on a Dylan yeah. Evans. Oh, Dylan. Wow. Look at this place right on the water. That's how we missed it because they're down into the riverside. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We'll do the room tour here from the door because it's quite small so I can basically point at everything. Really nice, big, big bed. I wasn't expecting that. I also was not expecting a private bathroom. So I'm very pleased. This place was nine US dollars for the both of us. They have Wi-Fi. This is great. Some bottles of water, but we already have like 500 of those. We've been collecting them all day. Oh, the bathroom's really big. Mirror, another mirror, some storage, loads of bags. So we're gonna need that storage and what seems like a mosquito net. So probably, yeah, fair we'll, amount we'll of bugs it. here tonight. Yeah. Right by the water. This is such a beautiful, beautiful sight from the door. This is really nice. The time really got to us on that road trip. It's like coming up to sunset now. That was just a really nice road trip. The roads were actually perfect. Not really any potholes compared to the, the road from Vientiane to Takek. And the roads here were just spectacular to look at. But now I think we're just gonna Relax, unwind. We've got more road tripping tomorrow where we head further up north and we'll obviously take you along the way. So don't miss that one. Wow.